Why is strength training important for athletes? Today we talk about why is strength training important for athletes? What are the goals of strength training for athletes? And what is important when you're designing a strength training program for athletes? Why is strength training important for athletes? Well, in my work as a strength and conditioning coach, we follow an approach, you might have heard about that, athlete-centered, coaches-driven. So what that means is the athlete is in the center. So everything we do as coaches is geared towards the best for the athletes. Obviously, it's not only me, the SNC coach, it's also the head coach of that program, of that sport who's running the show, but I'm supporting the head coach as good as I can. And everything I do is in the best interest for the athletes. So what is the best interest for the athletes from a strength and conditioning or physical preparation standpoint? Well, there are two goals. One, injury prevention, and the other one, improving performance. Injury prevention, why injury prevention? Well only a healthy, non-injured athlete can perform and can bring his best possible performance. And also, the lesser you're injured, the longer your career. Why improving performance? Well, I think that's obvious. Um, if you're performing, if you're competing in sport, you want to bring the best possible performance in the competitive arena. So let's talk about injury prevention. There are basically two types of injuries. Acute injuries, and chronic injuries. Acute injuries are injuries that happen due to incidences or whatsoever. These normally we can't change. These are part of the sport and they will always happen. Chronic injuries, however, is basically a damage done to the body due to overload, imbalances, whatsoever. These things we can influence and there is where the strength and conditioning comes in with a well-balanced, dedicated and directed strength training program for the athlete, the demands of the athlete and the demands of the sport. This is where we can have a huge impact as strength and conditioning coaches on the injury prevention for athletes. So let's look at the performance improvement aspect. How can strength training increase performance? It's important to note that strength training is not strength training. Many times strength training is used synony synonymously for all the different training methods with different training goals where strength training can help. What do I mean by that? Well, if you've seen any of my videos before, you know that there are different types of strength training and they all have different adaptations. So we could work on maximum strength, which basically means you becoming stronger. We can work on hypertrophy, which means muscle mass will grow, so the muscles will become a little bit bigger. We can work on power and speed strength, which will help you to become faster and more powerful. And we can also work on strength endurance, which will help you to last your efforts a little bit longer. And if we look across, across that spectrum of what we can do in strength training, you can see that the adaptations are very different. So if we look at one end, for example, the maximum strength is very, very different from the strength endurance. So what that means for the performance aspect is that we need to, we need to look at the particular sport, what is needed in that sport, and then we need to choose the right training method. That also means if we choose the wrong training method, strength training can be counterproductive. An example of that would be, you've probably heard strength training makes you slow. Well, that is true if you choose the wrong strength training method. If you look at some of my athletes, especially the BMX, which is a sport that is very speed and power determined, by no means are they slow. And that is because we choose the correct strength training methods to make them faster. If we would choose the incorrect methods, we we'll probably end up making them slower. So strength training, again, strength training is not strength training. You need to see what kind of strength training you're doing and what are the adaptations of that kind of strength training. Okay, so look, let's look a little bit in general what strength training can do. 
And again, if you have seen any of my previous videos, I try to look at different levels, let's say. So we have neurologically, we have metabolically, we have muscularly, we have technically and coordination, and we also have psychologically. So what does that mean? Again, depending on the training you're choosing, you can affect the neurological level or the neurological adaptations based on strength training. So that was a bit confusing, let me outline that. With the right strength training methods, you can improve the rate of recruitment, which is the total number of muscle fibers and motor units that are recruited. You can improve and increase the firing frequency, which means the, the, the signal from the brain traveling to the muscle will be faster and the muscle will contract faster. We can improve synchronization. Synchronization means different muscle muscle groups and muscle fibers working together ideally or not ideally so let's make let's take a simple simple example to make it um, visual so if we think about that example everyone uses with the biceps so if the that muscle is working that's the so-called agonist the working muscle and on the opposite side you have a so-called antagonist muscle what you want to see is the agonist is working and the antagonist is not working. That has been shown in studies in sprinters, for example, where you could see with muscle electromyography that the muscles that are working are highly active, the muscles, the antagonist, are almost like switched off. So what that means is, in order to have an ideal synchronization, you want to have the working muscles working and the, non, the antagonistic muscles not working. So if we come back to that example of the biceps and the triceps, if we would have that muscle working, the antagonist, and what we see in beginners also the opposing muscle working, is that we're giving two different signals, conflicting signals, to the body. So this one's working and the one that is also extending the arm is also working. So synchronization means the synchronized effort of the muscles working basically or the muscle groups working in harmony. And then lastly for the neurological is also the force modulation. Force modulation refers to that you are able to use the right amount of force that is needed for a particular action. So what that means is if we think about a very simple example, the only thing that comes to my mind now is if we want to pick up a pen from the ground which does need some force but the force is very little because the pen is very light so if we would if we would work inefficiently we would we would send we would send a signal for more force than is needed to be activated to pick up that pen so what that means is force modulation simply refers to that the body is able to send the right amount of force needed for a particular action. Okay, metabolically, what means metabolically? We have different energy systems in the body and then it is important that we look at which energy system is dominant in your sport and which energy system we want to work on. So we have, for example, the ATP-CP energy system, which gives energy for short periods of time, up to six seconds to 10 seconds. We have the glycolytic system, which gives a little bit, which gives energy for a little bit longer time and we have the oxidative system. So going into all these energy systems would go beyond the scope of this video. However, depending on the sport, if we're endurance based, we need to work more on the oxidative system, for example, if we choose to. So we need to select training methods that also work on longer durations and also on the oxidative system. So with strength training, we can actually also manipulate and get adaptations on the metabolic level. On the metabolic level. Okay, so what means muscular? Probably everyone knows muscular refers to the muscles, so looking at the growth of the muscles, but it's not only the growth of the muscles. It's also that we have different muscle fiber types. So connected to, to the neurological level, we have fast twitch fibers and we have slow twitch fibers. So depending on the demands of the sport, we can target with our strength training the fast twitch fibers or we can also target 
the slow twitch fibers. So and this is what I mentioned in the beginning. If we have a sport that is very dominant on fast twitch muscle fibers, strength and power and speed dependent sport, and we choose a strength training method that target the slow twitch fibers, we might even see over time that there's a shift in the fiber type distribution. So basically, over time, we'll get more slow twitch fibers and less fast twitch fibers. So that would be an example of choosing the wrong training method and the re resulting adaptation. Further than that, with the hypertrophy, we can also talk about muscular hypertrophy and also selective hypertrophy, which is also important. If we come back to that example of fast twitch fibers, there are training methods where we can selectively train the fast twitch muscle fibers. So therefore it's also important to understand what are the adaptations of each strength training method. So let's look at the coordinative and technical level. So if we look at coordination and technical level, I like to look at certain movement patterns. We have basic movement patterns, fundamental movement patterns, that are found in every single sport or in combination in a sport. So every sporting movement can be broken down into these fundamental movement patterns. So these fundamental movement patterns are it's a bending pattern, a squatting pattern, a lunging pattern, a pushing pattern, a pulling pattern, and also rotation and stabilization. And then there's also the gait. So what does that mean for our training? Okay, let me outline that in a, on an example that I found from Paul Czech, which I think is one of the best examples I've ever seen to make that clear. So let me step back a little bit. So if we think about throwing, we can look at the lower body and essentially when we step out that's a lunging movement. If we look at the trunk we can see that is a rotational movement and if we look at the upper body, the throw, that is a pushing movement. Yeah? Of course if we look at the details of a throw a little bit more in depth it, it becomes more complicated but for our strength and conditioning coaches it gives a good opportunity to dissect each sporting movement into fundamental patterns and use these fundamental movement patterns in training for that particular sport. And the last one, the psychological aspect, which is very often underestimated in my opinion because I have seen so many athletes that have grown in confidence over time as a result of the strength training. They became stronger over time. They saw that the strength training improves the performance in their sport, which has helped them to be more confident in their own sport and in competition. So to wrap it up, that was a longer video than I usually do. However, why is strength training important for athletes? Well, if we look at the goals of strength training from the standpoint of a strength and conditioning coach, injury prevention and improving performance. Injury prevention, we can look at acute injuries and chronic injuries that occur in a sport as a strength and conditioning coach. We can influence the incidence of chronic injuries. We can reduce the incidence of chronic injuries by designing an appropriate strength training program for, for the athlete and for the sport. Performance improvements, same thing here. If we select the right training methods that have the right adaptations for that particular sport, we're able to improve performance. If we have a sport that is strength, power, and speed determined, we need to find strength training methods that improve strength, power, and speed. We can also dissect it, so it's only strength or only power and speed. That's also possible. If we have a sport that is more dependent on endurance, we need to find training methods that can improve the performance aspect of that particular sport.